Today, I'm gonna go over 101 obscure Pokemon facts. Oh, and by the way, I heard it was impossible to click the subscribe button with your elbow. So if you wanna try it out, let me know and see if it works. Also, this video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. We'll get to that at the end of the video. So with that said, here we go. In Fire Red and Leaf Green, there's a special type of grass patch for hidden berries. And this is what they look like. If you notice, there's a little dark green indent there instead of the usual grass lines. The only possible way to poison a Steel-type Pokemon without using the ability Corrosion is by using the move Twin Needle in Generation 2, since it was the only move that could hit a Steel-type Pokemon with a chance of poisoning. But in Generation 3, this was fixed. There was a glitch in Pokemon Red and Blue where the move Counter could quite literally counter the opponent using an item. And even more funnily, the move will double in damage every turn it's used in succession. Oh, and on top of that, if the last move from a previous battle dealt damage, the move Counter would work in the next. So it was really janky in those games. There is currently a listing on eBay that consists of a PSA 10 First Edition Execute along with authentic Raptor Dinosaur eggs, and it's going for $39,000, which has to be the most random eBay listing I've ever seen. Grove Vile was actually revealed in Generation 2. You just have to look closely at Zatu to see it. You see it now? There are only four routes in the entirety of the Pokemon world that ends in a dead end, and the routes are Route 25 in Kanto, Route 224 in Sinnoh, Route 18 in Unova, and Route 2 in Galar. If you look closely, half of Garatina's face in his origin form looks identical to Arceus's. So this probably explains why Dialga and Polkia share resemblance to Arceus in their origin forms. In Ruby and Sapphire, there's a ledge behind Brawly in his gym, though you can only hop over it if you use cheats. This frame from the Pokemon anime looks hilarious. In Pokemon Coliseum, every unknown had a unique standing animation. Just look at the X unknown, it looks super cute. In Hia Hia City at the Game Freak office, if you show Morimatsu a Pokemon with a Game Boy origin mark, he will say, we had a poll in the company once a long time ago to see which Pokemon was the most popular, and back then the winner was Executor. I was on stream at Pokemon World several times, like here. Here we are, the Pokemon Unite! And even here. Kyogre and Groudon on the same team for that exact reason that you're mentioning, so to opt for Torkoal there. And here, on Instagram. Scyther's red and blue learn set is probably the worst learn set of all time, because even with TMs, it can't learn any stab moves. And on top of that, with this learn set, it's impossible for it to attack a ghost type Pokemon. Funny enough, in yellow, they give it the move Wing Attack at level 50, but still no bug stabbing moves. If you look very closely, red is actually wearing a helmet in the Generation 1 Bike Sprite, which kind of blew my mind when I found out. Lake of Rage was originally planned to be its own city, and it had its own Pokemon Center, Mart, and even a gym. There's a theory that Getsis doesn't have a right arm, and the only time that arm is actually visible is during the title screen cutscene, though it's discolored and also theorized that it was frostbitten off by Kira. This is what Mr. Mime's headbutt animation looks like in Pokemon Stadium 2, which is pretty terrifying looking. In Ruby and Sapphire, there's a 1 in 64 chance of seeing a hiker, camper, or picnicker climbing Mount Chimney when going up or down the cable car around 112, so you can see that these are among the rarest NPCs in Pokemon. Rock and Roll's name in Portuguese is pretty funny, since the word Rola is slang for dick. So it's Rock and Dicks in Portugal. In Generation 2, Bird Pokemon usually have the Pidgey Overworld Sprite, but funny enough, Delibird uses the Rhydon Overworld Sprite. So if you fly with a Delibird, it looks like you're flying around on a Rhydon, which just looks hilarious. There is a misprint of the Jungle Butterfree card where instead of saying First Edition, it says D Edition. The normal type wasn't mentioned in the anime until episode 217. Just listen. It can't. Miracote only works against water attacks. Hyper Beam's a normal attack. Which is pretty wild when you think about it. These are all the Pokemon that have had their types changed throughout the generations. And if you notice, Magnemite and Magneton were the only Pokemon for this to happen to for 13 whole years. If you didn't know, Game Freak was originally a magazine company, and this is what their first covers looked like, which is pretty cool. Due to a bug in Ruby and Sapphire, the move Protect had a 1 in 65,536 chance of failing on the first turn, which would be just mad unlucky, like shiny odds unlucky. This is what Greninja looks like without his tongue. Looks kinda weird. The ranking for each region in terms of population goes as follows. Johto with 452 people, Hoenn with 598, Kanto with 603, Galar with 727, Sinnoh with 755, Unova with 949, Alola with 1005, and finally, Chaos with 1,288, making Chaos the highest populated region. If a Fire Flying type Pokemon uses the moves Burn Up and then Roost, it will become typeless until the end of the turn, and the only Pokemon that can currently do this are Moltres and Ho-Oh. This is the entire Dizzes Ash made in 20 episodes in the Pokemon anime, and when walking these routes in the game, it takes about 30 seconds, which is pretty funny. Every single Pokemon introduced in Ultra Sun and Moon are weak to the ground type. Like, literally, just look for yourself. 
A line of Pokemon merchandise that featured only cat Pokemon also featured a Trubbish, which might confirm that Trubbish is actually a cat Pokemon. There's even an interview out there with Sugimori and Uno where they talk about how Trubbish is a Pokemon that disguises itself as a trash bag. So Trubbish is a cat confirmed. Venonat and Venomoth have not been seen in a regional Pokedex since Pokemon Gold and Silver, though they're finally making a return in Scarlet and Violet, which will be over 20 years later. There's a guy in Fortree City that sends love letters to his girlfriend in Moss Deep City. But when you go to Moss Deep City, it turns out the girlfriend is actually a little girl, and her older brother disapproves of the relationship. And when you track the Wingle that delivers the love letters back to Fortree, it will reward you with the Mental Herb, which is an item that cures infatuation. Ash's Pikachu's name in the manga is Jean-Luc Pikachu. This TGG player entered a tournament with a deck full of jumbo cards, and the judges ruled it legal since the card size is not specified in the rules. Unfortunately though, he wasn't able to attack since there hasn't been any energy jumbo cards printed. Elaine is the first trainer in Pokemon history to be seen battling with the Mewtwo that is legitimately owned, and we see it in the Pokemon Evolutions episode, The Discovery, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. In Black and White 2, there's an area known as the Nature Preserve, and can only be accessed by flying there on an airplane. And interestingly, it doesn't know what region this location resides in, because if you look at the map, it will not have you marked anywhere. So maybe in the future, we'll see this place in a new region. Apparently, Blastoise can fly. Well, at least in the new Pokemon Snap, it can. Just look. The first ever TCG product that was released in the United States was a Pokemon Demo Game Booster Pack, which came with 24 Shadowless base set Pokemon cards. And these packs were not intended for public sale, it was more for customers to sample the game at game stores. So this pack unopened is probably the rarest Pokemon booster ever. The sitting QD plus for Whisper has a butthole. Like, why though? There are currently only 3 Pokemon that can gain Stab from the move Extreme Speed, and Stab stands for Same Type Attack Bonus, and the Pokemon are Arceus, Zigzagoon, and its evolution, which is pretty funny. The Ghost Terrestrial form in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet features a Generation 1 unidentified Ghost Sprite from Lavender Tower, which is a pretty cool throwback. In Pokemon Stadium 2, there's a picture of a muscular guy in Chuck's gym, and it kinda looks like the Chad guy. If you've never noticed, both Meryl and Azumarill's tails can glow, but funny enough, they can't learn the move Tail Glow, which is weird because they're literally doing it. The in-battle backgrounds in X and Y have a chance of dropping an item after the player uses a certain move. For example, if the user uses Air Cutter, Blizzard, or Twister, the Greenberry Tree background will drop a random berry. Or for the Spiker Rock 2 background, if the player uses Hyper Voice or Rock Slide, it will drop one of the Evolutionary Stones, which is something I never knew about. In the Japanese versions of Fire Raider Leaf Green, the NPCs use different text fonts depending on their gender. Outside of Japan though, they instead use different colors, red for female and blue for males. These are all the items from the Pokemon games that are unattainable without cheating. And the most interesting one is probably the Travel Trunk, which allowed the players to switch their clothes without being at the Pokemon Center. The robotic machine invented by Dr. Kamiko in Pokemon XD has its own trainer class, and it is known as Robo Groudon. So when you battle Chobin, it literally says Robo Groudon Chobin will like to battle, which sounds pretty funny. This is Sui, an electrode Pokemon card is zapping electricity out of his butthole. Yes, I know it's based on an Apricorn, but really? The Elite Four member Agatha summons her Gengar from her cane. Just look at this. How interesting. Now then, this is my last Pokemon. Go, Gengar! Which is pretty cool. Go is the first main character in the anime to catch a pure dark type Pokemon, which is pretty surprising. Tauros is the only Generation 1 Pokemon to be untouched when it comes to gaining a new evolution, variant, or form. And no, Ditto was almost given an evolution in Gold and Silver, so Tauros is the only one. It is entirely possible to encounter a shiny Pokemon in the Hoenn Battle Tower. And if you do encounter one, just know it's an uncatchable full odds shiny. The question mark question mark question mark trainer has probably one of the coolest trainer sprites from the games. And interestingly, it's from the Pokestar Studios. Come to think of it, the Pokestar Studios have a lot of cool trainer sprites, like Arkham, Bryson Jet, and even the Mecha Cop. Choosing the female character is actually faster in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, simply because Lyra talks more than Ethan. What a surprise. Blue's name in Japanese is Green, and Green from the manga's name is Blue. And my name in Japanese is Dobbs. This is what it probably looks like inside of a Geodude. This is based on a Geode Rock. And Geode Rocks are known to have layers of sparkling crystals inside of them. In the Sevi Islands, there's a burial of an Onyx. But when you think about it, it could just be Onyx's body buried head first with half his body sticking out. Like, just look at this meme. The anime character Duplica owns the same hat that Ash does. Which has to mean that she was one of the 100 winners that won one from the Pokemon League. Which really shows the leagues that she goes to to copy others' appearances. Nidoking is one of the oldest Pokemon to have not gone through any major design transformations, because this is what it looked like during the beta stages of Pokemon, then again in the late 1990s, and now in its present form. Pokemon Stadium 2 has a map of the Johto and Kanto regions, and it even shows you where you can find every Pokemon, and it looks pretty nice. Charizard was the only Generation 1 starter Pokemon to not be seen on a winning team for this year's Worlds, which is... Ironic.
Ash has a polywag pencil sharpener, which I'm not gonna lie, is pretty cute. In the Pikachu short, Snorlax Snowman, Pikachu and his friends make a Snorlax made of snow, and it actually comes to life. So in the future, I wouldn't be surprised if we see an Ice-type variant of Snorlax. In the anime episode, The Ultimate Test, a green weedle is shown on screen for a few seconds, which at the time was probably just a coloring error. But coincidentally, Weedle's shiny color in Generation 2 was a shade of green, so you could say this is one of the first shiny Pokemon to ever be seen in the anime. In the Japanese version of Pokemon Silver, Slowpoke has stripes on his belly. Though, for some odd reason, it was removed from the games that were released internationally. I wonder why. In Generation 1, Pokemon cannot be inflicted by a status condition with an attacking move that is the same type as them. So, for example, Normal-type Pokemon cannot be paralyzed by the move Body Slam, or Electric-type Pokemon cannot be paralyzed by the move Thunder, which is pretty overpowered. The move Nice Slash in Japanese translates to the term Crossroad Killing, which literally means when a samurai receives a new katana, they test the weapon by attacking a random passerby. So if you use Nice Slash on a wild Pokemon, that's pretty messed up. This lady from Diamond and Pearl originally sold mulch, and his status is mixed with Pokemon Poop. Though in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, they changed it to where she sells berries instead, but they forgot to change her dialogue, so she literally hints that her berries are made of Pokemon Poop as well. It has never been revealed or confirmed whether Ash uses the same Tauros or Professor Oak simply sends him a random one, since if you didn't know, Ash owns 30 of them. This is what Melton looks like without its head. I guess that makes two Pokemon that can remove their head, with the other one being Blasphemin. Blasphemin. Wait, 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 I, I bought a book, okay? All right, Blasphemon. Happy? In the anime episode, A Bite to Remember, a buff Torchic is shown and also flexes its pecs, very disturbingly. If you fill every slot in Pokemon Box, Ruby, and Sapphire, you will be rewarded with a surfing Pikachu, which is really not that rewarding for filling in 1,500 slots. Give me like an earthquake Pikachu or something. Guzzler's home world in Ultra Sun and Moon is actually just a post-apocalyptic version of the Alola region, which is kind of terrifying. The Tamer Trainer class, also known as the Fierce Beast user in Japanese, is holding a lollipop for some reason, and they even continue this weird trait in the Let's Go games. This is what plushes look like in the Pokemon anime, and they're pretty cute. Every main series Pokemon gimmick has been seen before in the anime. Misty's Dream Legendary Water Pokemon was shown before Mega Evolution. The Pink Pokemon from Pekin Island were shown before Regional Pokemon. The Giant Dragonite from the anime episode Mystery at the Lighthouse was shown before Dynamaxing. Different sizes and Pokemon was shown with Ash's Kingler before Legends Arceus. And finally, the Crystal Onyx from Sunburst Island was shown before Terrestrializing. The Pokemon Lucario and Goku share the same English voice actor, which is Sean Chamel. Lapras can learn the most one-hit KO moves naturally, with the moves being Sheer Cold, Fissure, and Horn Drill. There are currently five cards in the TCG that have a move or an ability that instantly wins you the game, with four of them being unknown cards and the fifth one being a random Slowbro card. And the move that wins the game is called Walk Off Homer, which is pretty random. In the first two generations, the starter Pokemon were ordered Fire, Water, and Grass, even though it's the opposite in the Pokedex. In Pokemon Stadium, when Raichu uses the move Surf, it uses its tail as a surfboard, which is probably what inspired Alolan Raichu's design. Every main series Pokemon game, except for Let's Go and Legends Arceus, is essentially red versus blue. Just look for yourself. Totoro from the Studio Ghibli movie My Neighbor Totoro is likely the inspiration for Snorlax's design, and probably even Munchlax's too. Shiny Larvesta looks like a baby Arceus, which is kind of a trip when you realize that. Gothitelle has many legs and feet, and you can see them when Caitlyn's Gothitelle battles Cynthia's Garchomp. These are the stats shown in the anime for Ash, Cynthia, Leon, and Diantha. And of course, Ash is maxed out in unpredictability, which can also be known as anime plot armor. There's a Yu-Gi-Oh card with a Pokemon reference called A Wild Monster Appears. There were official Game Boy Advance cartridges that had full Pokemon anime episodes on them, which essentially allowed you to watch the anime on your Game Boy Advance, which I'm not gonna lie, is pretty dope. In Generation 1, there are certain areas where if you surf, it will spawn Pokemon from the last grassy tile that you stepped on. And this actually happened to me during one of my Pokemon Red speedruns on Dobbs Gaming. Just look at my reaction. I really need to change my notes for this. I did a repel! Oh, I did a repel! Did a repel! But yeah, why is there a rat down the water? Wait, what? What the heck? Oh my god! In X and Y, there's a battle style known as an inverse battle, where Pokemon type matches by reverse and no type is immune to any other type. So I guess the Chillin' Berry had a use after all, since it has damage from super effective normal type moves. The NPC who gives you the Explorer Kit to access the Underground was confirmed to be related to Roark and Byron in the manga, and he is simply known as the Underground Man. 
the organization PETA released a parody Pokemon game called Pokemon Black and Blue, where the player has to try to free all the Pokemon. And the way it looks is pretty hilarious. This is what the Porygon line looks like in Pokemon Rumble. They're basically low poly Porygons. We have never seen what the Focus Ash looks like in the anime, but we have seen it in the manga. And this is what it looks like. It's just a bow tied around the Pokemon. The player and rival from Pokemon X are likely immortal, since they were inches away from the ultimate weapon when Lissandra fired it for the second time. In Pokemon Stadium 2, Swagger always misses if the opponent has plus 6 attack, which is kinda unfortunate. It was confirmed in the anime that Comfy is a ride Pokemon, since we see Nurse Joy flying with them in the episode Real Life Inquire Within. The Unknown in the third Pokemon movie were the first Pokemon to ever be 3D animated, ever. And this was confirmed in the 4Kids commentary, just listen. I think the unknown are the first uh, computer generated animated Pokemon that we've had in either the series or any of the movies. Is that That's right? true. That is true. Actually, all of them have been 2D. The other 3D work that has been done in the movie has always been uh, backgrounds or vehicles or something of that nature or in the environments. But this is the first time a Pokemon has been a, a 3D animated Pokemon. Which is pretty interesting. Ash's Lapras is the only character that has been shown in the anime to age, which is kind of wild because Ash has been stuck at 10 for the past 20 years. And finally, in the Hurdle Dash minigame in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Diglett and Dugtrio burrow underground instead of jumping over the hurdles, simply to not reveal what they look like underneath, which is pretty disappointing because I kind of imagine them jumping like the mole enemy in Mario. And there you go, 101 obscure Pokemon facts. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And before we end it off, this video was sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. And man, this wallet is what I needed 10 years ago. Like literally, you see this football card? Yeah, this was my wallet from back when I was in high school, and I always found it annoying how humongous it was. And eventually, I swapped over to this wallet that was a lot smaller. But I'm telling you, if I knew about the Ridge Wallet, I would have definitely chosen it. Because just look at it in comparison to both my old wallets. It's a no-brainer. And with the Ridge Wallet, I love how discreet it is. It stores all my important cards very nicely, and on top of that, it has a money strap. So all my bills are secured without taking up a lot of room. And I also love how it looks. It's very simple and stylish, just what I'm looking for in a wallet. And Ridge even has a key case, which shows all my keys discreetly too. So no noisy pockets, which is awesome. So yeah, if you want to grab your own today or give it as a gift for the holidays, use my link down below in the description to get 10% off your first order. Again, use the link ridge.com slash dobs. And a big shout out to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Really appreciate it, guys. And if you enjoyed this video, I have another 100 obscure facts for y'all to check out. Just click on the end card right here. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.